been a while since I've posted a new video. Uh, I haven't been building any boats. I haven't really been uh, tinkering around with uh, the actual construction of anything. I'm working on a changeover to my finger joints. Uh, I had that one mounted on the wood, which I did the video on uh, cutting the finger joints for the 14-foot uh, electric motorcraft. Uh, and then later I found some of those same finger joints on sale and so I bought two more thinking that I could uh, chop and channel them into a longer version and I'm in the middle of that now of converting two of them over to uh, a longer section of finger joints and I'm finding some little uh, made in China surprises on the uh, uh, spacing but we'll get into that later in a separate video. Today we're going to go into what I've been doing for the last, well, over the winter, now that it's a beautiful day out. Uh, as I finished uh, some designs, I finally finished my high-sided uh, reservoir, uh, which I'm going to probably rename that into something else for the big lake over in uh, South Dakota. I, oh, oh, ahoy? A A O O A H E or A or something like that. I'll figure out what the name is from uh, my friend Doug over there, who actually actually wanted the higher side version of the reservoir 1525. So it took me forever to get this one curve on the bow that when you when when um, you assemble the model, the uh, gunnel rails are straight across as they come up around the, where the uh, bow part come together took me forever but that's not that what we're doing today I have redesigned a couple bigger electric motorcrafts uh, one of the viewers followers who may be watching this video right at the moment asked me about a, a two-up version whether or not uh, two people could fit in the 14 and I said no that's uh, now it's too small for that that I would maybe work on something bigger and so I told him I would work on an 18 footer which this is the end result, the final design. Uh, I will be using uh, the one previous to that uh, with the higher sides on it for the tank testing today, but the bottom is basically the same, so uh, you can see how it fits. But he didn't want an 18. It was going to be too big. He didn't want to get into all the uh, uh, scarfing, double scarfing, because you're going to have that spacer in between two full sheets of 8 foot. So I came up with the, the 16. So these both of these will be the EMC uh, 18 plus 2 and the EMC 16 plus 2. The plus 2 meaning uh, for uh, made for 2-up paddling. Uh, it's a lot wider than, say, the 14 here, even though it's a 16, you, but you can see the, uh, the family lineage on the boats, and it even holds true between the, uh, the 14 and the 18. Uh, the models uh, will be up at Duckworks here in probably a couple weeks and depending on <laughs> how quickly I get this video edited and, and posted on my YouTube channel uh, they may be uh, simultaneous so and uh, I've also been working on something else too this is a uh, 14 foot duck boat I don't know if you can see the pretty the pretty uh, graphics I got a, a log and some plants on the side and it's a strange creature. It has a double bottom on it. You can probably see it a little bit better on the stern, if you can see through the plants. Um, but it's got a uh, two foot wide down here. And I wanted that for you look at a lot of the, uh, the duck boats, the aluminum ones. And the whole interior is filled with uh, uh, strengthening uh, gussets uh, to keep the aluminum from uh, bending. But uh, they're just basically a trip hazard and uh, you got to really pick your feet up otherwise you're going to go tumbling down them but with I've decided that with this all these chines lines along here between the bottom panel and the side the side panel uh, there's going to be enough stiffness in that also if you're down in the bayous and you're powering over the logs uh, probably have a half an inch thick uh, maybe three-eighths, but uh, if you're pounding over logs, you might do this whole panel here is uh, uh, half inch. And you'll be able to just power up over the logs, especially if you got one of those little short-saft uh, uh, swamp motors. 
and we'll tank test something near at the end here too. Uh, I've always uh, been admired the Blanchard knockabouts and uh, the old style designs and so I thought well stitching glue uh, construction lends itself to making panels as opposed to uh, uh, I mean you can still make a, a hull like this with uh, the panels strips and stuff but if the you almost spend as much time building the framework as you do the actual construction of the hull so with my stitch and glue techniques I do all the uh, lofting and figuring out the curve patterns of each of these little individual uh, side panels and then you just wire them together and glue them and uh, you know epoxy and fillet and tape and all that kind of stuff and then you got your little boat so that's uh, probably this next year so let's get in with a uh, the 16 and see how it floats I'm kind of interested to see where the it's got enough beam in it now the uh, it's probably about an inch on the uh, chines on the side above the water line uh, let's put in a let's put in two big people and from initial layout of this by the looks of it I would say at the five foot one two three four five and ten foot six seven eight nine ten well let's go back about it okay this is a 16 the 18 was five and ten so there we got two people in it let me put them in the center of the boat so they set the level here okay Most of the side panel is out of the water with two people. And we're just under right along the chine right in through here. So I'm happy with that. I can have a little bit of water coming up the sides. Let's put some let's put some cargo in here. still still fine so I'm happy with the 16 so it'll go into full design mode now with all the lofting and the building ah, pardon me the text instructions and everything okay so much for the 16 let's put the 8 <laughs> 18 just I'm going to give me a bigger tank if I'm going to do these bigger boats okay tilt it so you can see a little bit okay a lot of a lot of freeboard even on the bottom I was thinking of, of taking on this model again and forcing the keel line down maybe another inch in depth but I don't I don't think that's gonna be needed let's put a couple big people back in it okay here's my five and ten foot mark yeah it doesn't really it goes down to the water line on the on the, uh, the chine right down here between the side and bottom panel it's just barely in so and then also remember the 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 sides of the real hole will not be this tall they'll be the lower uh, you know like that you can kind of I'm assuming you can see the difference when they come around yeah you can see the difference in the height so the bottoms are the same, so with two people up, uh, you're going to be right in here. And what about yeah? You're going to be right on the line right there. So let's put some cargo in it. Let's move some of this cargo forward. This thing could be a real exped expedition kind of boat. Also, this hull would make a good trimaran. I think maybe with this one, I'm going to design some little, uh, what are they, an animes? Animas? The little side uh, arms? I think I'll uh, add that to this one so you'll come up with this hull with a couple little pickle forks out each side. And it should sail like like a water skipper going across the water there so let me let me sink 
<laughs> this one, well, I need some kindling anyway, but, but I don't, let's see if it even fits in here, just barely. Let's put some weight in it before. Oh, she's sinking. Okay. But that gives me a good idea of where, what I need to do. Let that drip dry here. I'm going to have one little sidebar here on, on, a, on a setup that I'm going to be doing another video on tying the death grip belt hitch. And the text and photos will be up at Duckworks here probably in two to three weeks. And then my friend Bob Ellis up in Alaska that has his little column in the sm have you seen this column in the Small Crop Revisor will be doing them uh, probably this summer. I think it's, uh, yeah, late spring, summer, late summer. So uh, look for those then. So let me reset up with what I've got so far with the uh, death grip belt hitch. You can see, and I'll come up closer here in a second, you can see by the, uh, the knuckle here that this is a real death grip hitch. I go the right direction, and it's got the self-tapping uh, tail on it, even though I ha this one I haven't put the extra two coils on it. This is a simple version, but it's a... Uh, nah. Adjustable. You know, if you're... Mahouts in India prefer this not when they want to saddle up their elephants because it's you can you know once you get it around the elephant you just you know pull up on this and you go uh! it's like when you kick a horse you got to use both legs on an elephant to get him to suck in but what's like coming up here to show uh, oh yeah you'll see on this knot choke it up here so there's not so much out you'll see that on the belt hitch, the knot itself is in line with the coil. Now, if this was a loop, it would look more like this. The knot would be, because it ties itself around the, the running part, or actually this part, uh, it would look like that. That would be what the loop would look like. And then the regular hitch, the death grip hitch, would look like what it is. It's just, this is kind of looks like the death grip hitch, where it's the knot tied on something else, and this is, this is the, uh, the line here that you're, you know, you're tying onto, and then the death grip itself. Well, actually, this is the line that you tie on. Let me redo that. <laughs> This is the line, and then the death grip would be this one. So then you would have these two lines going off to a load, like a drogue or something like that. Well, actually, the drogue would be down here. This would be two or two inches. So, but I was also thinking that the uh, this belt hitch might make a good uh, reefing reefing knot. And I'll probably go into that more in the, the the video on that. I mean, you you could put this around the boom and then around the uh, uh, one of the uh, eyes in the uh, the main that were normally you'd put a hook into to take down on the luff. You could put this in and then pull down on it. Even if you had to, uh, might be an emergency thing. You could run the cord through that eye and tie the uh, death grip uh, belt hitch. And then you'd be able to relieve the tension on the hook in case you were getting chafing on the line that hooks in to the uh, the luff tension hook. Or you could put this in, you know, for hurricanes. You could make a bunch of these out of small line and toss them around your sail if you can't take your sail down, you know, unbind your sail and put it away in case of heavy winds. Uh, and I was thinking also when I do the, uh, the main one on this one, I'm going to make up a bunch of small ones because I think this belt hitch is it's scalable you can use giant rope you can small use small tiny little line in fact on the on the EMC 14 on the rudder controls I got two little 
tiny uh, death grip loops on the end of that in order to adjust for the uh, the on the rudder for so that the pedals are equal distance from on the end of the motor. Uh, so it's scalable, and I was thinking that it, you know something like this, if you had some small line alone, you could use uh, in the field as a as a splint, or if you got something, uh, I need to, my neighbor is a uh, marine medic. Uh, I need to ask him if it would be something that'd be useful to learn for the medics in order to for long term use on when you have a wound and you got to put pressure on it. You could slap a couple of these death grip uh, belt hitches around that and to hold it. Uh, in case you have to go off and triage somebody else so we'll see about that i'll ask him and that so this will button up this video um i've got that uh, uh next boat you know ready to go i gotta go get the plywood up, up in port towns and eden saw woods uh to start building the soul duck uh, drifter um so we'll get around that when we get around to it but i wanted uh something for you guys to know that I'm still here and, and then that there's still things coming out the Red Barn uh, design studio off my drawing boards uh, that uh, maybe will pique your interest and maybe I will eventually get the boat that you want to build. So uh, until then I guess this is uh, Red Barn Boat saying adios.